my gosh, we had elections today and tomorrow. Looks like I'm not taking the tunnels. Sensor 7, front door open. That walk is crazy cold. I'm definitely taking the tunnels tomorrow. None of this crazy minus 30-ness. Okay, taking the tunnels today. Just walk past them. Can I please have a minute of your time? I'm running for student government. I'm trying to put in some new programs to save children's money. Okay, I gotta run to class, I'm late, but thank you, I'll vote for you. Thank you. Okay, Noah, you got five minutes to get to class, don't stop for any more people. Excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? I'm trying to make students' life better on campus. This is me and my team, can you please vote? No problem, thank you. Thank you, have a nice day. Okay, Noah, you got two pamphlets and you aren't anywhere closer to class. Next person, walk past them. You got this. Hey, can I talk to you for a second? I'm running for student government and I need your vote. The election starts yesterday and today, and when you get time, can you please um, vote? No problem. Thanks so much. Have now I got day. one minute to get to class. My pet peeve is not being able to say no to campaigners in the tunnels around election season out of fear of being rude. So on days when the weather is bad, I am sometimes forced to walk outside in the overbearing Canadian cold. It's either that or being late for class. Which with the weather we have, sometimes being late is the only option. I related my pet peeve to the freedom of movement in international law. The freedom of movement was first signed on by countries in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Being a declaration, however, the UDHR is not legally binding. So a signature on it does not bound countries by it. What does bind them, though, to the freedom of movement right is Article 12 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. This right states that every citizen in a country has the right to move in, out of, and back in said country freely as they choose. It also grants the right to travel and live where you please within your country. Because of the Canadian in me that doesn't allow me to be rude, I now don't have a freedom of movement hindered by the campaigners in the tunnels. This limit of freedom to move closely resembles that of people being told to stay in certain areas of their country during a disease outbreak or citizens being confined to their homes when a natural disaster is incoming. The only different aspect is that in those situations, the governments are hindering their rights, whereas in my case, another group with a different set of rights is hindering mine. While Article 12 is enforced at the international level with countries making sure to hold each other accountable for how they treat their citizens, being able to freely move, in my specific case, would be hard to enforce at a domestic level, never mind an international one. It cannot be enforced in my instance as there are, no conflicting, as there are conflicting rights, mine and those who have the right to campaign. Not, only allow, not allowing them to campaign would be unjustifiable. So from here, there are two remedies. One, we can alter the way campaigners go about their business, not allowing them to stop anyone with headphones or anyone who doesn't make eye contact with them, etc. Or two, I can get over it and learn how to politely say no or brave out the cold.